Welcome back everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and share. So I'm just going to do a short video today about something that is very, very important. And I've been getting a lot of messages from people asking me questions about different chicken issues. And one of the most common questions that I get is about coccidiosis. It's something that I think pretty much every poultry keeper deals with at one point or another and coccidia is everywhere. It's naturally in the dirt but there's a lot of important things to know about it and actually there's different strains of it too. I can remember when I used to have goats here and I was testing, I took some samples in to my vet because um, a couple of them weren't doing too well and they told me that they did find coccidia but it's species specific and it was not the certain type that would affect goats but then I needed to check my flock because they're in the same, not the same pen, but they're in the same area knowing that that could have been the strain that causes chickens to have issues with coccidiosis. So it is, what is coccidia? It's a microscopic parasite, parasitic organism that infects poultry and when it's ingested by a chicken and it actually does a lot of damage to the intestinal wall of a chicken and you know, levels of this can be anywhere from minimal, harmless, to very, very life-threatening. What are the symptoms? Well, you'll probably see runny poop, and as it progresses, you could see actually blood in the poop as it's starting to damage the intestinal walls of the chickens. So... It's important to keep an eye on that and it's important to test right away because you don't want to get to the point where it's actually damaging your chicken's organs. Now low levels of it, chickens can kind of develop an immunity to it. So there's actually, if you have your own microscope, which I do, I, I check my own samples here, you can get what's called a McMaster slide which has a lines on it to kind of guide you to figure out how much you're dealing with and how bad of a cosy load your bird has for a fecal egg count. Now, this can affect chicks as well as, well as older birds. Now, for chicks, you do have the option of doing medicated feed. It will look something like this. I have this because I used to use medicated feed, but I kind of feel like it's best not to give chicks chemicals like that. And if you see chicks with runny stools, there's certain things that you can do. Put a couple drops of apple cider vinegar in the water and try to clear it up before you jump to the conclusion that it's coccidiosis because more often than not you can fix the problem. So I don't use medicated anymore and I kind of wonder if, you know, if you're treating them right off the bat, if it kind of deters them from developing that strong natural immunity to it once they do go outside. Um, symptoms at any age range can be also reduced appetite, they might be hunched over, they might have a pale comb, and there's a homeopathic remedy for coccidiosis which contains, again, the apple cider vinegar, garlic, and cayenne pepper. But if you're at the point where you're seeing blood, like I said, in the stools, and it's starting to damage your bird, you need to treat it ASAP. You could do the homeopathic remedy with 
treatment, which is Corid or Salmet. Now with Corid, this is what I use with my older birds. Looks like this. Very easy to find at Tractor Supply. If I remember correctly, I think you can even find it on Amazon perhaps. Um, there is no egg withdrawal with Corid, but with Salmet, S-U-L-M-E-N-T, there is an egg withdrawal and Corid works a little better and a little faster, so I do recommend the Corid for treating coccidiosis. Now, if you're going to use the medicated chick starter, um, make sure that your chicks are not vaccinated. There's actually a vaccine for chicks for coccidiosis, but you can't do both. You can't do the vaccine plus the medicated feed because they'll kind of cancel each other out. They won't work as well. It has to be one or the other, vaccine or the feed. Now, the medicated feed for chicks is not a cure. And you can find medicated feed for older birds, too. You can find medicated feed for turkeys. It's not a cure. It's a preventative. Just, I feel like, the, the homeopathic stuff. Again, if you're to the point where your bird is hunched over and there's blood in that stool, you have to get the Corid right away. I actually want to show you something here. This is my Bantam Dominique Hen, one of them. I have two of these girls. Her name is Gimper, actually. When she was a chick, she had a vitamin deficiency, and her feet were curled over like this, and she kind of was gimping. So that's how she got her name. I did fix that problem. Took about a week. I'll do a future video on what you can do about chick health. Come on, Gimpy. Now... Gimper here, I noticed months ago, I'm going to say probably about four or five months ago, that she had a pale comb and she was getting thin. And so I did a fecal sample here and I saw a ton of coccidia eggs in her stool. And so I treated her for that. It took a couple weeks. I treated with Corid two times for seven days, and I mean, it was just a lot. She had a ton of those eggs in her, in her stool. And then a couple months later, I checked again, and I successfully treated. I didn't see anything, but she wasn't getting better. Still has the pale comb. You can see that here. Still getting thin. I couldn't figure it out. I checked. I rechecked. In case I was making errors, I took a sample to my vet. I tried another vet. We didn't see anything, any more coccidia in her samples. And recently, I would say within the last probably month, she started to have undigested feed in her poop, as well as all the other symptoms that I mentioned. And so... I did some research and found out that when a bird has a really bad coccidiosis issue, they're more prone to clostridium. And undigested feed in the poop is a symptom of clostridium. So I had her checked for that and that came back negative as well as a bunch of other tests. And so I do think it's possible that she had coccidiosis so bad that it did so much damage that she cannot digest properly anymore. She's currently on an antibiotic um, just to see if there's just something else that we're missing and if that doesn't work either then I think my you know my my hunch about her just being so damaged from all that cosy is probably true. I don't know what I'm going to do because she still eats like a champ and she still, you know, walks around, acts totally normal, but we just have that paleness and we have the problem with digestion. 
So I'm going to wait for the test results. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to keep trying to give her extra treats. I'm giving her bananas, yogurt, vitamins, doing all I can. So I'll update you in the future about that. But I, I just wanted to show this bird to you. She's kind of wondering what <laughs> what's going on. She's a little sweetheart. I've been really sad about about my gimper here and, and what's going on. But hopefully we will figure it out. There is no more cozy for this girl. Yes, she's, I love her. I love them all though. <laughs> so, again, I, I check my own samples here. And I'll just show you something real quick. Because I'm going to do... I'm going to grab something here. I'm going to do a future video on how to check your own samples. I bought my microscope on Amazon. It works really well and it was under $200. Money well spent if you consider how much money it costs you during a year if you have a big flock to keep bringing samples in. So it was well worth it. I will do, like I said, a future video where I show you how to use a microscope for fecal samples and I'm actually going to take my phone and position it so you can see what I'm seeing in the microscope. I'll go out and get some samples from my flock and I'll come back on the video and do it live. Um, hopefully I don't see anything <laughs> but if I do it'll be great for educational purposes. So just so you know when you're looking through a microscope, the cosy eggs are tiny, really, really tiny. And they're different from worm eggs, other parasite eggs. A worm egg will, can be shaped round or it can kind of be more oval. I'm not the world's best drawer, that totally is not an oval. <laughs> But anyways, when you see a worm egg, it can have points on the end. It'll have a very distinguishable wall around it, and they will all have a uniform center. So when you see these eggs, they might have a circle in here, big or small. Um, actually, there is one worm egg that looks and I believe it is tapeworm where the center looks like this has different parts to it but the cosy it's very hard to see very hard you're gonna have to have a high magnification and the center won't be as uniform you might see one with a center like this or you might see some dots in there like that and I've actually seen so many that they're kind of like connected to each other like that. They can actually have two center parts like this. So that's what cosy looks like. Very different from your worm eggs like this. But again, I will go through that on a future video. So I just wanted to highlight those things for you. Here's a few reminders again with my old school whiteboard. Now if you want information on the homeopathic stuff, like how much ACV garlic and cayenne to do, just comment below or send me an email. Um, now also, coccidiosis is less common in free range birds and more common in an enclosed space. Like I have an enclosed run outside and it's I deal with it probably a few times a year. I'll find it in the samples because what's happening in is in that enclosed area, it's always in the dirt. And maybe you'll rake it through, you'll rake the sand through, but it's always going to be there. And the more wet or muddy your environment is, the more you're going to find. So it's especially important to do checks in the spring and in the fall when it might be more wet in your in your enclosed run or wherever your chickens are at. So again I will be back with a future video and more on this but those are just a few things because like I said I get a lot of messages about coccidiosis and it's so common I think it's something a lot of people deal with so 
please remember to subscribe, share, and comment with any questions or other things that you might want to talk about. Thanks. Appreciate it, everybody.